BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 94, Sexual Responsibility. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging, covering treatment and solutions that include bioidentical hormone pellet therapy, safe and affordable skin rejuvenation, and spa quality botanical skincare. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Today we're going to be talking about responsibility and sexual responsibility. It, it generally is considered to be a woman's responsibility to make sure that she doesn't get pregnant. Uh, and so most of the, the research and, and uh, focus over the last 50 years All in, the research and focus. All the research and focus <laughs> over the last 50 years has been in the direction of female contraception. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to talk about male contraceptions and male responsibility. And historically, you know, you have, you have two or three options for men. One is uh, denial. Uh, don't, denial. Don't, don't Denial's do not appropriate. You can always <laughs> tell they're in denial. <laughs> hello. Hello. Uh, celibacy then, we'll say it that yeah, way. Okay. Uh, condoms. Vasectomies and condoms. Mm -hmm. And that, that's pretty much all that's out there for men and that's all that's been out there mm -hmm. for men. But now they're beginning to do some, some research. Mm -hmm. And the, the research falls into two main categories. We're going to talk about both of the categories. Uh, one of the categories is physical intervention. Uh, sort of concrete, if you will, <laughs> physical things they can do. Uh, a and procedure. A procedure. Okay. Something, a procedure you can have so that you're not fertile, but it's reversible. Yes. Now, vasectomy is not reversible, okay? We don't consider that reversible, even though some people do have reversals. They're not... They're not highly successful. They're not the successful odds are pretty in most slim. cases. So, and, for, and for a number of reasons. Yeah. I mean, when, when you get a vasectomy, what they do is take the vas deferens and cut it, cut a it's section out. It's a little out. tube. And then to keep it from growing back, they take one of the ends they cut and sew it into the, the fat tissue so that it can't pull loose and regenerate itself. So or have they, anything swim across the yeah, great divide. Yeah, nothing can cross the gap uh, <laughs> so that you're not going to get somebody pregnant. But then later, and, and when you have a 50% divorce rate, when people die and, and partners die and you remarry and you still want to have kids, mm -hmm. uh, it is so often uh, a decision that people want reversed one way or right. the other. Right. And, and it's, it's not very reversible. No, neither are tubal ligations for women. So so it, that, those are procedures for birth control that we're talking about that are permanent. I'm going to consider them permanent. Right. Now we're going to talk about reversible birth control. Like for women, we have birth control pills. Mm -hmm. Now we have some new, new research that brings us two different types of reversible birth control for men. Okay. And one and type much, is hormonal. One type is hormonal. And one type is procedural. Right. Okay. Right. So what do you want to talk about first? Well, as my socially, I think that men should take the responsibility as much as much as we do. I couldn't agree more. So, and, and I've raised sons that, with that message. Having said that, I think that one of these methods, the hormonal method, may be detrimental to men. And so I'm not. I mean, I want men to to have the same responsibility as we have, but I'm worried about the hormonal method because testosterone is very necessary, as we know for health for both women and men and in the contraceptive uh, the contraceptive for men which is like an oral it's a pill mm -hmm. um, it is decreasing the amount of testosterone produced you have to do that so to it's an stop. inhibitor it inhibits it feeds mm -hmm. back just like birth control pills goes to your pituitary and shuts down the surges that stimulate both sperm and testosterone so it's like a male birth control pill. So that is going to lower the, the testosterone level of young men. And I don't think that that's healthy. Mm -hmm. but, but I don't also don't think that birth because, control because pills... Because testosterone in men has so many more functions than right. just sperm production. No, it's your brain, it's your health, it's your <laughs> immune system. It's, I mean, your brain, yeah. yeah. But I mean, we don't Every want seven you to seconds. have too much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, that's not exactly what I meant, but... Oh. You're the counselor. <laughs> I'm talking about Adolescent science. Adolescent males every seven yeah, seconds. Yeah. Sexual mm -hmm. thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, but this this would stop some of that. Yeah, it would. But but I don't. I wouldn't do but that. That's not what you're recommending. As much yeah. as I think it should be even, I don't know how how healthy this is going to be. Yeah. We still want to talk about it just because it's it's good to talk about the different options that we have, 
and in talking about it, they may come up with something that is the next stage and it will be totally okay for the testosterone levels. Yeah. Well, with 50 years of research on women's fertility, there still are questions about how healthy is it that are aside from the questions, the social questions about whether or not they should be doing it. Right. So if, if you now say, well, we're gonna wait, let's look at the men. Can we do the same things with their systems? Mm -hmm. Because their systems are hormonal as well. Mm -hmm. So you're right to raise the question, what are the health side effects? And, and is it worth doing? And Cost, they, risk, And they benefit. didn't show in this study, which they may in subsequent studies, the actual t testosterone level mm -hmm. that you had to achieve to also stop sperm production. And they're, they're using testosterone combined with progesterone, like a progestin. And so they, they didn't give us the exact testosterone levels that you would have to drop the patient to yeah. to actually receive the uh, benefit of no sperm production. And, and they're, the studies are using synthetic testosterone. Right. And synthetic testosterone and synthetic progestin. Okay. They don't use estrogen, and that's definitely a, a, you know not good for men. But, but they use progestin, and kind of like they do in the birth control pill for women, we use estrogen and uh, progestin. And in the men, they use testosterone and progestin. Okay. And those two things stop both sperm production and the, uh, and the production of some of their testosterone. It has to decrease the level of testosterone. But, but it's not a one size fits all because not all men are alike. You, you have uh, size uh, and metabolic differences and you have genetic differences. Right, and they did say that they weren't sure about dosage because each genetic type or each, um, uh, they were looking at, they were look, just like they did in the other study, they were looking at Asians, they were looking mm -hmm. at Caucasians, they were looking at African Americans and Africans and and they were looking at all the different genetic combinations and they said they all required a different dose of this birth control. So, I mean, do you have to look back at your genetics to find out how much you're going to take? They're not quite, they haven't quite figured this out. It's kind of hard to mass produce them if they've got to be individualized. Right, right. individualized that much by, mm -hmm. and so most people don't even know what their background is. So mm -hmm. maybe there will be a test for that. But having said that, let me go back to how birth control pills work because okay. they work the same for women as men. When we give somebody birth control, it is the same hormone, their similar hormone that your body would produce. It fools your pituitary. It goes into your system, it goes to your brain, and your pituitary is right between your eyes. It goes to that gland, and it tells it, we have enough hormone, don't, don't send out a uh, FSH and LH surge to the ovary. Don't stimulate the ovary. So this does low it, does amount- Does it fool it into thinking it's pregnant? No, it's not that. It just, it, it just stops the pulses that come from the pituitary, okay. travel through your bloodstream to your ovaries, and make your ovaries make both estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, and an egg. So those pulses are shut down by a birth control pill. Mm -hmm. But we're not giving somebody back as much estrogen or progesterone as they used to make. In fact, when I test levels on the pill, people's estrogen should be between 60 and 250 if they're cycling, and it is as low as less than 0.5. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is very low. I mean, I have some that you can't even, they have very little estrogen at all. Right. So it depends on the birth control pill. However, so most people think, oh, I'm taking estrogen, I have more estrogen in my body because I'm taking a birth control pill, mm -hmm. when in fact, they have less. It's shutting down that up and down system of surging in the mid month. It's shutting down the total amount of estrogen that they're exposed to. So that's what we're doing to men. It takes a small amount of hormone to shut down the stimulation of the testicles. So they're gonna be given a small amount of testosterone and progesterone to stop the same surges that women have. You guys have the same surges right. to make testosterone and sperm. So it's gonna be a lower testosterone level. There's no way you can get around that. But it's a broad brush because what they're doing is suppressing testosterone, but only a portion of the testosterone goes to the creation of sperm. And, and the right. body uses testosterone for a lot of for other everything else. reasons and functions. And so you, you suppress it all yeah. in order to accomplish one goal. Right. And so then you have to ask what are the side effects 
or the cost effects of the total system suppression. Right. I, I mean, we don't talk about this with birth control pills, but when you're in a low estrogen state, many women find that they have painful intercourse because they have what I call old lady bottom. That means that would be painful. That would be painful. So that means they have paper thin uh, skin around the vagina and inside the vagina it's very dry. So some birth control pills actually get you to such a low level of estrogen that that's, it's like a breastfeeding <laughs> vagina or an old birth control. It's too right. painful, I'm that's not right. going to do it. That's right. Well, that's, that's one of the ways it, it can work. That's not what we're looking for. And we don't, and even though we laugh about it, it's really not funny oh, no. if that happens to you. So um, the, the other thing um, that low dose birth controls do birth control pills for women do, is it shuts down our testosterone. Mm -hmm. So it makes it work another way. We lose our desire. Many women who are young come in to me and say, I'm on the birth control pill. They may not be on for birth control. They may be on for ovarian cysts or polycystic ovaries or, or a, lots of different reasons, and they have no sex drive. They're young married people, and they're like, I don't, I, I don't care anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, it has a lot to do with the suppression of their ovaries, and the, and the ovaries make testosterone. So when we're suppressing eggs, we're suppressing estrogen, we're also suppressing testosterone. Right. So they lose sex drive. So this is what we don't want to have with men, and it's even more critical with men because there are so many, you have one hormone, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. You have testosterone, and we're going to shut it down for birth control. Now, it may be totally fine. I have to wait. I think the jury's still out on that one. Well, because it doesn't just make you non-sexual or, or asexual. There are all of the other functions that hormones. It's your for, only hormone. You, I mean, your only mass, sex for hormone. For energy, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's your strength. It's your energy. It's your right. mood. It's everything. I mean, we have several hormones that help us with that. You've got you guys have one. Yeah. So I mean, so I will have to wait and see what the testosterone levels are when they test this see what the young men's testosterone levels end up being after they're on this pill for mm -hmm. birth control and see what what their symptoms are. I mean, what kind of side effects are the, is this going to cause? So, so I guess the point then is that be aware that they are doing the research. They are beginning to focus the research on men. They're trying to find out what, if anything, will work in terms of manipulating the hormones. But the problem is men's hormonal systems are, are coalesced around testosterone. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's a systemic manipulation. Mm -hmm. and they haven't figured out how to subdivide that yet. That's right. Okay. That's right. So, so that's the hormonal intervention. Mm -hmm. Then there are uh, operative or physical interventions that can also occur. Mm -hmm. and, and those come in two, two forms, two basically? Two forms. One well, well, three. Well, one is the vasectomy. Mm -hmm. But that's permanent. Which We're is not permanent. talking about that today. Right. But one is a, a dissolvable gel that they inject into... Uh, the vast, the same thing you would do a, a, a surgical procedure on, it's a reversible kind of um, injection to actually block the sperm from uh, reaching the ejaculatory point. It's, it blocks it in the vast. So it's, it's like, like caulk. Yeah. They, they put caulk, they inject some caulk into <laughs> the vast. Re, but it's reversible and it's kind of a brilliant idea. Yeah, if it works. Yeah. And I mean, and, and so the jury's out on that too, but we want you to know that they're doing some research on this. Mm -hmm. And if it's reversible, that, that would take place of most vasectomies. And that, and that, the research is to determine, first of all, does it work? And then secondly, are there uh, unknown costs that would occur? Does that lead mm -hmm. to some other kind of side effect? But it doesn't seem to affect the testosterone levels mm -mm. at all. No, and it shouldn't because the testosterone level ha really has to do with your pituitary gland and your testicles, and it doesn't really have anything to do with your vasectomy. Or so so it's, it's a way to pinch off or control the release of that one tube, mm -hmm. and the and rest of your chemical systems are okay. Are fine, but then you have to find out. They found a very favorable rate of um, dissolving it mm -hmm. and having it open up and then be normal. So, so that we'll have to test a little bit more before I would go out and ask for that. Yeah. And I'm sure there'll be studies all over the country doing that. And, and is that a treatment that's available now, or is that just something that's no, being is, researched? No, this is in a research, and we're just giving you the hope for the future, basically. Yeah, I, I think the article mentioned the third-level clinical trials. Right, that means it's in, in medical schools, and they're doing the studies, and okay. they're, they're going to collect the data, but it may take a while to get the data on that. Yeah. 
And, and then so that's one. The other is something called an, uh, an IVD as opposed to an IUD. Yeah. Uh, and what is that? And that is actually, that, that's just, a, well, IUDs, you have to know what that is first, right? <laughs> okay, yeah. An IUD is a, um, is a very small plastic or copper um, device that we insert into the uterus so that we do not, so that we can't implant. Or with the one, Marina, the only one I have ever put in, Morena has a little progesterone, so it has a little hormone on it, and it is in the uterus, prevents implantation, but really it prevents ovulation because the progesterone is, is right next to the ovary, and it stops it from ovulation, but it doesn't affect estrogen and testosterone levels. They're still normal. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't work like the pill does, but it has several ways of working. The progesterone stops up the mucus, so that sperm can't get to the uh, to the egg, and it's a device inside the uterus. It's as old as Egypt. Mm -hmm. In Egypt, they put pebbles inside the uterus, and that stopped implantation. And it also works on the ovary, so you don't ovulate. So okay. that's what it does in women. Now they're using uh, a device to put into the epididymis, which is that that. Um, I do this because it's like a coil of tubes. <laughs> and where, because she's Italian. Yes, and because I'm Italian. She does it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they use this device and they and they put this in the epididymis. That's where the that's where the sperm. It's like a holding area for the sperm to mature before they're ejaculated. So it stops the maturation of the sperm, and I I assume kills. Kills yeah, it's kind of like the egg tubes motility. in women to, mm -hmm. to let the eggs mature mm -hmm. and, and be right. ready. The, this is a holding tank for sperm to mature. Right. Then and it moves into the vas deferens and then it moves into the penis for ejaculation. Right. So they can block it with a device, mm -hmm. plastic or copper as well? Yeah, a plastic. Okay. They wouldn't put copper. And, and it, it has to be surgically? Surgically placed. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, women are so used to having stuff done to them, mm -hmm. having babies, going in for pap smears from the time you're, I don't know how old now, 16 or 20, I don't know. <laughs> it depends on when you're sexually active. So right. um, we're so used to that, but guys are like, mm, no, not doing anything here. Right. So it may, we may have to have a lot of social changes to overcome that. Mm -hmm. But for someone who doesn't want to have a vas and doesn't want to have something permanent, doesn't want to have, uh, have something that... Um, messes with their body messes chemistry. With their, yeah, with their chemistry. And also doesn't want to have their best deference blocked because there's always a risk of it not being unblocked well because mm -hmm. the vas has to actually have kind of a peristalsis as well to push out the um, the semen. Mm -hmm. So sometimes if you put something in there, it scars and then the, it doesn't it push as well. Yeah. So this would be an alternative to that. Plus, it's a par they're doing all of these things parallel because they feel the need to get men involved in birth control. And so they're all doing their, the way they think it works best, that's science. And, and that's actually a good thing because then we'll find the best way to do it. And that's where most people will go well, to get their answer. And none of the science removes the moral responsibility for making good decisions about what you're going to do sexually. Right. I mean, we're talking about ways to interrupt the risk of conception, which is what this is all about. It's right. about birth control that our society has to consider because people are sexually active. You have to make your own personal decisions about your sexual activities. Even if these things become available as options, that conversation still needs to be had with your sons and with your daughters, uh, and not just with your daughters. You know, if mm -hmm. you're gonna go out there and be sexually active and there's a risk that you're gonna impregnate somebody, you have to be responsible. And we want you to be aware of that and we wanna encourage you to have those conversations as families. Uh, based on your own moral behaviors. Mm -hmm. But know the science, know the risk, know the options. And science is starting to look at men. Right. And th the other thing is sexually transmitted diseases, yeah. except for condoms, nothing we have discussed today prevents sexually transmitted diseases. Absolutely. That's huge. I mean, if, if a woman, and now they're finding men, get chlamydia, yeah. each time they get chlamydia, they decrease their their possibility of having conception by 11%. Yeah. You have it three times, you're down 33%. Yeah. 
you may not be able to get pregnant. So you have to use condoms if you're not in a marital or long-term, and I don't mean long-term a week, I mean long-term <laughs> years well, it's a, it's before you take today. the condoms off. I mean, The, the research today sakes, shows that teenagers practice what's called serial monogamy. Right. They tell me, I, I, say, I used One to say, person are, you, at a time, are you but monogamous? But a whole history of people. Yeah. <laughs> and they go, yes. Yeah. How long have you had your boyfriend? Three weeks. Yeah. I mean, that's not monogamy. I mean, we need to have a more clear definition for Yeah, you may not people. have multiple partners at the same time, but if you've had multiple partners, you are not historically monogamous. Right. That's right. Okay. And so, in any case, if you're not in a marital situation, you need to be using condoms, or and, and that's really the only thing that you can use to prevent the SCDs. sexually tra right. transmitted diseases. So, it has, to be, it has to be the case. Everything we're discussing is really for committed couples. Right. So, and, and it depends on what, how you consider that commitment. All right. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. Follow Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Brett Newcomb can be found at brettnewcomb.com.